Mark Denham at Breakfast Podcast. Hello, it's podcast time again, and welcome to episode 232 of the best bits of the Atom Radio Breakfast Show. And this is Mark Denham at the weekend, Saturday, the 19th of August, when this comes out. And the bank holiday weekend is not this weekend, but next weekend. And woohoo to that! On the way in the podcast this week, we've got the definition of punching. We've got Gen Z and their jobs and their ridiculous demands. The most entitled generation ever, I think. You've got Tuesday trivia. Uh, when crime doesn't pay, guilty pleasures, a bank holiday conundrum. You've got the definition of cool. And you've also got a brilliant use of AI in politics all on the way. Enjoy. Mark Denham. At Breakfast. Podcast. Morning then, 16 minutes to 7. You've got Mark Denham at Breakfast on Atom Radio. Emily Atak admits being single is miserable. Single life is miserable. And she cries herself to sleep. Well, Emily, I'm also single. The two of us could be unsingle together. You know, just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Could be doing each other a favour. This is Mark Tenham. At breakfast. Atom Radio. And today, Gen Z back in the headlines again. Gen Z aren't happy with working from home. No, Gen Z would like a promotion. That's what Gen Z want. Research shows that so-called title inflation is up by 50% as job descriptions such as chief cheerleader, guru and chief listener are insisted upon by a growing number of Gen Z workers. That's those aged between 18 and 24. Gen Z workers, rather than expecting work from home and a bonus, Gen Z workers expect an annual promotion, meaning that bosses are having to invent a range of fancy new titles, as well as reinvent some traditional titles to keep the Gen Zers happy. Job titles once meant bigger salaries and wider responsibilities, However, some people are now getting vice president, partner or principal in their title within just a couple of years of work. How? How? I don't get it. I really don't get it. Therefore, given the Gen Zers aren't happy and given the Gen Zers would like title inflation, I'm giving you the opportunity now to describe to me in your own title what you do. What job title would you like to have on air at atomradio.co.uk? Mark Denham. At breakfast. This is Atom Radio. Gen Zers want title inflation. They basically want a promotion uh, every single year. So rather than just, you know, getting your salary, uh, maybe getting to work from home and maybe getting your bonus and that. No, that's not good enough for a Gen Zer. They want a promotion, so they want a fancy title. And I'm thinking here, like here I am, sat here thinking of a Monday morning. What could I call myself? Uh, Director of Anthem Banging Out. How about that? Mm, Maybe not. Uh, Morning Guru. Yep, that that may work. I don't know. You see, I'm, I'm struggling now. Uh, struggling to think of what I could call myself. Mark Denham. At breakfast. Podcast. Studies show that people are lonely and or depressed are more likely to sleep with multiple pillows. Do you know what? I've got two. I, w- I don't know. Don't know about that. And generally, women care more in relationships, but are more likely to walk away and stay strong once they reach breaking point. There's an important thing for you to remember today. Mark Denham at breakfast. This is Atom Radio. Let this be a lesson to you if you are thinking of stealing a laptop. This day, 12 years ago, a teenager who stole a laptop from a West London flat during the riots was traced on Facebook by the computer's owner. Unfortunately, he stole the laptop from Greg Martin, an information security professional and former NASA and FBI employee. He had installed a tracking device on the laptop and got the suspect's ID from the social networking site Facebook The information included the man's name, school, address in West London and information about his wireless internet connection. Uh, Sahail Khalifa, who was 18, was later charged with handling stolen goods. Be careful if you are thinking of nicking a laptop, it probably isn't worth it. This is Mark Tenham. At breakfast. Atom Radio. Let's find out the top five, however, of Guilty Pleasures on Top 5 Tuesday this week. And number five, Daniela Westbrook but only when she first found fame and definitely not now. At number four, Stock Aitken Waterman Music. At number three, Knitting. At number two, a cheesy music playlist on Spotify. And the number one top five Tuesday submission for Guilty Pleasures 
anything that's bad for me as long as it's in small doses. Mark Denham at breakfast. Podcast. 12 days to go now until the bank holiday. No one's going to be complaining about that, are they? Unless it happens to be that you're in a job where you are working the bank holiday, uh, in which case then it doesn't really matter, does it? Whether there's 10 days, 12 days or 30 days, you still got to work, you still got to work. Hopefully, though, if you are working the bank holiday in 12 days' time, you will get uh, double time. What happens, though? And I don't know the answer to this. What happens if Monday is your rostered day off anyway? Do you get any compensation for the fact that, in effect, you've lost your rostered day off because it was a day off anyway? I don't know is the honest answer to that now. And I am wondering if you are someone that works uh, in retail or or something like that, something where you do have to work on the uh, Bank Holiday Monday, where you would generally be expected to work a Bank Holiday Monday, do you get an additional day off or do you get extra pay to uh, note the fact that you've lost your rostered day off anyway, the benefit of, because it's a bank holiday? I don't know now how that works. Mark Denham. At breakfast. This is Atom Radio. There is a dilemma today that I'm asking for your help to solve, and that dilemma is, well, it came out yesterday in conversation with my friend, my friend who I know very, very well. She has a friend who I've met once. Her friend thinks she's in a loving, happy relationship. They've been together about 18 months. However, my friend yesterday found her friend's boyfriend active on dating sites, and she's saying to me, what should I do? And I said, can I put this out on the show in the morning and we'll try and get some carefully considered advice. Uh, I I don't know whether that's about to happen or not, but can I put this out tomorrow? Uh, And she said, yes, as long as I don't mention any names. So there we are. No names. There's the situation. And it's on air at atomradio.co.uk this morning. Paul, I'm not 100% sure that you've got quite what I was trying to get to here. Uh, in that my friend is saying, like, how do I tell her? How does she tell her friend? And you've come in on the email, morning to you, and said, swipe on him and see if he also swipes on you. Well, yeah, my friend is single and she wouldn't be doing anything wrong, I suppose, in swiping on anyone other than the fact that she does know uh, that it's her friend's boyfriend. So it would therefore be very, very wrong. And I don't think... When I was saying, you know, like, what should she do? I don't think the idea was to gain a new boyfriend herself. Certainly not her friend's boyfriend, Paul. Like, you know, I I, I don't know if it still exists in this day and age or not, but there did used to be a code, didn't there? There was a very strong code where you never went with your friend's boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, etc. If that doesn't still exist then it certainly should still exist, Paul. Mark Denham. At breakfast. Podcast. Atom Radio. Morning, morning, morning. It is Mark Denham at breakfast, banging out the anthems. It's Thursday. And today we're talking about cool with the top 100 cool brands announced by the youth of today. Uh, And they put Netflix at number one. And I, I, do you know what? I have Netflix, but it's part of my TV package. I have, uh, I've got two logins. I've never used mine but I've given the uh, the second login to my son and he uses that. So he's got it on his phone and he can watch Netflix stuff on his phone. Uh, I, however, I've never watched Netflix. I'm obviously not that cool. Included in the list, not in the top 10, the BBC, uh, Fortnite, the game, Monopoly, the game is in there as well. Sports Direct makes it. Snickers is there. Uh, Aldi is in there as well. Under Armour, the clothing manufacturer, Lidl uh, and Crocs. Crocs is 84 which is many, 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 many places too high, in my humble opinion. Who ever decided that Crocs were high? What is the future like if people are deciding that Crocs are cool? I don't get that. Today I want to know, though, uh, tell me something that was cool back in your day. Let's teach the kids they didn't invent cool on air at atomradio.co.uk. Mark Denham at breakfast. This is Atom Radio. The demise of Oxford Street could spell the end of all British high streets, we're told. They risk collapsing into wastelands. Oh, that's a bit like Slough's High Street, I think. Mark Denham. At breakfast. Podcast. Today, it's been revealed that an AI camera has caught 300 motorists. A new camera 
designed to trap motorists using mobile phones, has managed to capture in three days 117 people using their mobile phones while driving and 130 people in cars without seatbelts after being installed in Devon. The freestanding camera takes high-quality photos that are then reviewed by AI software and this determines whether an offence has been committed or not. So what it's basically saying is it's going to take a photo of you, whether you're committing an offence or not, and then it'll analyse whether it thinks you are committing an offence. Therefore, you could be going about your business perfectly legally without being on your phone and while wearing a seatbelt and you'd have your picture taken anyway. And what happens to the pictures that are taken that, you know, prove no criminality? You see, now this is dodge. If you don't mind my saying, this is a bit dodge. What I want to know today, though, is what would you like to have an AI camera be able to detect for you on air at atomradio.co.uk? Morning, Martin. This could be the email of the day, and I love this. Thank you so much for this. Martin says, I'd like AI technology to analyse footage of politicians when they're asked questions to be able to flash up on the screen whether or not it's a lie. Aha, now that, Martin, that, can you imagine? When it comes around to the next general election and they do the hustings and that on TV, can you imagine that? A little thing uh, with a a green tick for the truth and a red X for a lie. Can you imagine that when it comes around to the next election? That would be fun, wouldn't it, eh? That'd be fun. I think that may be a brilliant idea, Martin. Get that crowd funded and get it going. Mark Denham. At breakfast. Podcast. I think that's a brilliant idea. I really do. A green cross if there's a possibility of the truth being told or a red X if there's a possibility of a lie being told. I know which one I think would probably be on the screen more if you could do that. And I think it's an amazing idea. Of course, it may be the person that you're looking to interview on the TV may disappear off into a dairy fridge and you never ever get to to test the technology anyway. But, you know, congratulations to Boris Johnson on getting elected in 2019 without ever facing any scrutiny at all uh, other than facing the This Morning Sofa. Amazing stuff that was. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast this week. Episode 232 is a wrap. Class dismissed. We'll do it all again next week for you. And in order to do that, we'll have to do a week of shows. So make sure you're listening 6 until 10, Monday to Friday on atomradio.co.uk, on your mobile phone, on the online radio box app, on TuneIn or on Streamer. Or, of course, just say to your smart speaker its name and play Atom Radio on TuneIn. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Mark Denham. At Breakfast. Podcast.